So now that we've discovered how the CPU interacts with I.O. devices, I want to turn our attention to how I.O. devices are physically laid out and connected to the CPU. This is something that's normally referred to as the system bus. Uh, many of these components we've talked about uh, over the course of the, the class, and some are new, such as the GPU that we haven't directly incorporated yet, but will be doing now. Uh, we're also going to be discussing the PCI Express bus interface that you see on this as the main system bus of a modern computer. Uh, but if you look here, we have our CPU and our cache memory and controller and memory. And of course, we spent a great deal of time discussing these components. Uh, we talked about our ROM BIOS as the part of the computer that just has that initial boot uh, logic that knows exactly where to find the initial hard drive, uh, to find the boot partition, to get the operating system to start. Uh, the interrupt controller we just talked about recently. Remember, this is where all the interrupt lines go to on a modern CPU, and then there's one interrupt line that is fed directly to the CPU from the controller. This clock here represents the system clock, which is usually a quartz crystal, which is responsible for the timing of the CPU. Remember, if you have a 4 gigahertz CPU, that means that your clock speed is running at 4 billion times per second. Our DMA controller here is a direct memory access controller. So this is a chip that manages that uh, interface between the CPU uh, and then the I.O. and memory bus. So you can see here that uh, the DMA controller sits on the bus and it is in between memory and the PCI Express bus here, which is uh, our bus to all of our I.O. We're going to get into more detail on what the PCI bus Express looks like in this talk. Um, and that's kind of where we're going now. The, the GPU here is a graphics processing unit, so this is a specialized processor that deals with graphics processing. So you can think of this as your graphics card. That's, that's generally what it is. Many laptops and more uh, economy-friendly desktops have a built-in GPU in their chipset, uh, but you might actually have a graphics card as well. A little bit of terminology, so when you're dealing with a desktop or laptop, you would normally refer to a bus as opposed to if you're on a uh, enterprise grade machine like a System Z or a mainframe, you would refer to this as a channel. The system bus has a number of jobs. It connects the CPU and memory, and it also connects the I.O. peripherals, uh, which include things like the graphical card, uh, or any other cards that you have on there, such as uh, say like modem or network card or anything like that. Uh, it actually connects your USB bus and your um, Thunderbolt or Firewire if you have it, uh, your SATA bus for your drives, all of these things, your IO peripherals uh, will eventually make it back to the CPU over this plane. And we'll, we'll look at the details of that in a moment. The physical packaging of this is commonly called a backplane, but sometimes it's called a system bus or external bus. Um, this is also an example of a broadcast bus and how it is formatted. So here we have a display where we've seen basically this part already. Uh, we have our CPU and our I.O. module. Uh, this we're going to explore a little bit more deeply. This is going to be that I.O. controller, and then we have main memory. Uh, notice here that there is direct paths from the I.O. module to the CPU. Remember that this is facilitated or facilitates uh, direct memory access once it is set up. Uh, from And then I.O. module can talk directly to memory, as you can see here, and move information uh, from one place to the other. Uh, behind the I.O. controller here, the I.O. module, are the I.O. devices themselves. These would consist of anything from hard drives to video cards to uh, USB devices uh, to uh, SATA devices, anything of that nature. In a modern computer, uh, your system bus is built one of two ways. This is an image of an older architecture that had what's called a north bridge and a south bridge, where our I.O. controller is actually kind of broken up into two pieces. The idea here is that you had a faster section, the north bridge, and a slower controller, the south bridge. And the slower controller had to speak through the faster northern controller and had no direct access to the CPU and memory itself. Um, now, the north bridge 
was specifically timed for super fast components like main memory and your graphics processing unit uh, and the CPU itself. The Southbridge dealt with everything else effectively, your disk controller, your USB devices, your network device. And remember that for any of these devices that were attached to the Southbridge to communicate with the Northbridge, they had to do so directly through this single bus. The Northbridge would then have to relay that information up to the CPU as necessary. Here we have two more depictions of that. On the left-hand side, uh, this is the same architecture that we saw on the previous slide, uh, but here we have a more modern uh, architecture. In this case, the logic of what used to be in the Northbridge, uh, the controller that managed the memory and the graphics, has actually been embedded into the CPU itself. So this is actually now in the CPU silicon. The same circuitry is there, it's just not located in a physically separate chip. This was done to speed up the process because we got to the, the point where the speeds required uh, to kind of gain improvements were being hindered more by having this additional bus between the Northbridge and the CPU uh, than any other factor. So it was decided that it was smarter to use some of the silicon in, this, in the actual CPU itself rather than, say, using it for another core or two for the Northbridge instead. This brought the Northbridge uh, closer into the CPU itself and allowed us to reduce the latency that was brought by having a separate bus. But the overall architecture is the same otherwise. It's just that uh, everything connects directly to the CPU as opposed to connecting to the North Bridge and then that connecting to the CPU. When we made this switch, uh, the South Bridge just became known as the chipset. So this Intel Z3700 here, this is actually just a chipset. Now, it controls basically everything that the South Bridge used to control, access to PCI, I devices, SATA devices, USB, etc.